Peggy Young and every pair of books. The first thing when you have books that are, are damaged, the first thing you do is to stand one up and you open the covers like this and you look, this one's really stinky, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And you see if it's torn down in the, the spine here, down in the sides, and it's opened in the sides here. This one really isn't open very much, and it's been glued. This one will be, well, I think we'll start on another one because this one is not, it's been glued in very, very well. It really needs to be cut open, opened it up. The first thing I think you do with this one, because it is so solid, is to check the pages. And you're going to have to open it up so it can be perfect bound. And when you open up the book, because it is torn, you can see inside it's, it's split along here. So it is going to have to be perfect bound. To perfect bind a book, you open it up and you use gauze to put on the back. Now you can get it gauze like this. I like the kind that's uh, more of a muslin rather than the gauze that's like you would strain something with. Uh, primarily because this tends to break and tear much easier. This is a lot more durable. Where do and you get that type of gauze? Uh, these were bought in packets. Muslim. Muslim. This one, uh, also it was bought in a package, Linco, but I had issues with this time. And this one, I have no idea. I just found that I had it in, in the, my supplies. <laughs> but it's, it's really good for what we have to do. The only thing is, it might be, no, it's just about right. For large books, it's just perfect. But when a book gets to this point, uh, it's really hard to salvage because you get this book that's very, uh, smells moldy, and you get it around other books, you only affect the other books. It's, uh, you need to, you can keep it, but you need to keep it separate. And you need to keep it covered somehow and not let it get touch any of your other books. Because it can affect it. You're saying moldy books are contagious? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, what you're saying is, if they are something that needs to be preserved for other than the book, the content needs to be preserved. It has to be isolated somehow. Yes. If it if it's, uh, has a mold problem. Now, if somehow you can disinfect that mold in some way, I'm not sure how. But you talked about the freeze dry. Does that take care of something like that? You know, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I've never seen the freeze drying process that they did. They did it in Seattle. And they have a room that they put them in. And what it did was to suck all of the smoke uh, out of the books. Probably some kind of a vacuum. Yeah, all oh, kind of. Like the whole room in a vacuum or something. Yeah, something like that. <coughs> something. They called it freeze drying, and it's. Uh, but we had to go ahead then and clean the books, but they weren't moldy, thank heavens. What about mites? I've heard that there's book mites that are also contagious. That if you have. People donate books to you and they've been stored improperly or whatever that you can infect your library. I would think, yeah. 
What does it look like when there's light in it? I don't know, I, because I've never, uh, I've never heard about the mites doing it. Of course, in textbooks, you don't have to worry about that too much, unless a kid is throwing a book into a dumpster or the toilet. They throw it into the toilet, it's pretty much shot, pretty much gone. Mm -hmm. So, but we've had books that have been rescued from the dumpster. And so sometimes they get a little, really messy. Yes? Uh, we had an early infestation one time, and it just wiped out all the books that were stored together. Oh yes, earwigs love to eat. Ants love to eat. Termites. Termites. You know, anything like that. If you have that, then it's pretty obvious how you can get rid of the termites or the uh, the ants or the the uh, uh, airwigs because you can see them. Dust mites or mites that get into books are so tiny you can't see them. Mm. You see the damage, maybe. I, mean, I saw a deal on YouTube. They basically break down the paper and over tiny little holes. In the pages and the yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so gotta get rid of them. Uh, I would think to, to take a paper towel with maybe some kind of uh, I think you can freeze them maybe. Well, it would yeah. be worth a try. Yeah, as long as no moisture gets. Right. Yeah, yeah see a problems with freezers and yeah. refrigerators and the moisture. Yeah. 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 If but you if you could put them in, a, in uh, some kind of a, wrap them, I would think first, like in a, a, maybe a cloth or something that will absorb the more, any moisture. Mm -hmm. And put them in a, a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer. Mm -hmm. It would be a good experiment to try it anyhow. Mm -hmm. I saw one lady use one of those devices that she got from Costco. Uh, that sucked all the air yeah. out of it and then sealed yeah. the bag. Vacuum, yeah. And they were. It's well, worth a try. What about the opposite? What about extreme heat? Would that do anything? Not my or would it damage the book? Um, it would dry it out. It would dry it out. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, it wouldn't be damaged like moisture does. And also it might fade it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've got books. Uh, little mystery books on my shelf at home that date back from 1900, 1912. So, so far I haven't needed to fix them either. <laughs> so. I've been into used bookstores that smell moldy. Yes. Would, if you bought a book then, I, that's would that one thing, contaminate your books at home? Uh, be very careful. Be sure they're in the fresh air for a while, yeah. or even out in the sun. Huh? Leave them outside for a while, the heat, uh, in that case, would help dissipate the mold. I would think it, it's uh, because sunlight I guess you kill check mold. the book itself and see mm -hmm. if it smelled moldy like before you bought it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have a problem with old bookstores, antique bookstores, because of that. It just and more it's more my allergies than anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. The book cleaner that we got. The book cleaner, Steve got this. And I've never tried it, but a book cleaner would be wonderful for co cleaning off the covers, especially like this one, to clean the covers, or any of them that, where they get dirty and, and uh, well, even for uh, a mold problem anything water problem or anything you could at least clean them up a little bit with a cleaner just put it on a little bit of paper on a piece of paper towel and rub it just to clean it yes so does that work on all sur surfaces the cleaner because like the book i have right here the uh -huh. cloth book would it work on that or does it work on you know what what type of book i have never used this okay but i'm oh, going okay. to try it yeah, yeah if you don't mind okay mm -hmm. and we'll see okay okay I, uh, I am a firm one for trying anything that works. <laughs> we got you it can't tell what works until you try it. That's right. Mm -hmm. We got it on Amazon. They can look it up and see all the spec uh, specs on it. Oops. Whose book was this one? 
Okay, is it okay if I go ahead and cut the cover and... Well, I don't know. It's an old family Bible. Okay, 1840. so... You're definitely going to want to keep it. But I would... I keep it outside when, on a good sunny day for a while just to let it air out and just keep something that's over, lightly over it because you don't want roots coming over and doing any droppings or bugs. So, but I mean, I'm not going to ruin it. Okay. I hope. In fact, do you want to come up here? <laughs> <laughs> Make you do the operation. <laughs> <laughs> do the deed, Lana. Go, go for it. The other knife that I really like, someplace under here. Ah. My handy dandy little knife. <laughs> now, I even saw some of these in an antique store. The only trouble was, I just bought new ones three days before that, and it was exactly the same. Uh, but this one I like because you want a very thin blade and fairly narrow. And this one fits the bill. A lot of pocket knives don't. They're bigger. So, but now it's getting under here. This has been glued down so. You know, we might be able just to go in from the back. See if you can go in and just... I don't know. Get in there even. I'm going to let you try. With that one or with this one. This is another knife that I really used a lot. And the Fettling knife. Which is like this. Knives are a very, very necessary tool. Which one do you use? Uh, she's going to try it with the fettling knife, but this has been glued down so solid, I don't know if we can do it. I don't think so. Let's see. You did an awfully good job on this to begin with. I didn't do it. Oh. <laughs> I, this is how I got it. Sewing is you don't want to damage that old sewing. And then it's got see, it's got those big cords. Right, that's exactly the yeah. way. Uh, you could try it. We could try it. And we don't need it as white as that one. We're trying to figure out how we're going to get into the, the back. Get this book so we can hold it together. It has a wide cord. There's the heavy, heavy sewing right board. in here, the binding here. Board. I'm going to go get mm -hmm. the uh, metal here mm -hmm. or a uh, clear button. Oh, oh the, the uh, ruler? Yeah, uh -huh. I'll go get it.
This is a new uh, procedure that we're doing that I've never done before. But the, uh, the cover and the spine are glued down so solid, but it's split between the cover and the book. Everything except the cords, and we don't want to we don't want to damage those original cords. At least I don't want to because it's part of the original book. So we're going to try and perfect bind it on top instead of going into the cover like I normally would. Okay. These are good scissors. Okay, then you want to make another one just the same size. Okay. So is that muslin or? This is a muslin. Just mm -hmm. like the fabric from the fabric mm -hmm. store? Yeah, just be sure it's a light muslin, not real heavy. Because the heavier you get, the more it's going to show up in the, when you glue it back down inside the cover. But uh, I like it because it's stronger than gauze. So you're doing the front and the back covers in that? Is that what you're, you're yes. wrapping it all the way around? Now, sometimes if the back covers is solid and not torn at all, I'll just do the spine and the front cover. The one side is torn so that I don't disturb the, the, other, the original. And if at some point the other side tears, we can always just put another layer down the spine and then down that side. This is the other stamp paper that we used, that I have used and it works really good. And it was a student that told me that that would, why not use that, that will work. Okay, now, we just follow your cue and glue it like that, and glue it down there, and then, these are my handy dandy protectors. All this is, is the scrap laminate, when you laminate, uh, if you have a laminator, and uh, you save all the scraps, don't throw them away, most people throw that stuff away, and I would, take the old, the end of the roll, or all the scraps, and cut them into strips. Or you can use wax paper if you're doing it at home and you don't have it. So, ooh. My brushes at home were too gross to go and bring. Been using it now for about 20 years. If you keep them used that long, you've been cleaning them pretty good. You know, I, I put them in, I wash them out and I stick them in water. experiment because so often glue will eat brush bristles so you have to get some where the bristles are stiff enough and then just hope that they'll last and get all as much glue as possible out of them 
And sometimes I worked with one lady who was a teacher out at Eisenhower with special ed, and she could clean a brush that was just, she'd get every speck of it out. I never was able to manage that quite that good, but then I would keep it in water, and that keeps the brushes nice and soft. Do you like that? Yes. The best form of brush is a natural hair brush, or like a horse hair, something like that, because uh, it's a uh, nylon will dissolve. Yeah. It's a Lowell, Lowell Cornwell filbert. And this is a 100% pure bricklock. The glue you're using is something you buy from a book supply store? Yes, it's a book binding glue. And this is neutral pH adhesive Linco. You get a Linco? It's Linco, L-I-N. Oh, L-I-N, -N. see, I was wondering why Linco had it. <laughs> and these brushes are industrial grade chip brushes. Krauss and Becker. Yeah, they're horse hair. Okay. Only we can't get them down in the mouth of the bottle, so we'd have to have them in a little dish or something. What we could do is, Steve, could you give me one of those cups? Oh, and for erasers, pink pearl. Uh, this one I've never haven't used uh, for the sandpaper or the white ink eraser. I love those white ink erasers. And I had one that would also would erase color crane, which uh, has to take a special type of eraser. Okay. And after you get your book glued for the perfect binding, Are, are you putting the glue on the page or are you putting it Well, on this book only. We're doing it on the inside of the cover, on top, and on the on the end sheet. So you're actually putting it on the... We're putting on it the on the end sheet. Normally you would never do that. So, because this end sheet could be torn out, but hopefully it'll hold. And then go ahead and glue it again. Glue it again? Uh-huh. So it's kind of like water polish thing. Mm, pretty much it. So this is really an experiment, and just hope that it will be able to hold. When it's dry, we have, um, on this one, we'll use some of this, and it's a white tape that will cover that up and make it look a little better. Now, is there any kind of a tape that could be used for this that you wouldn't be cutting a separate cloth and put uh, possibly, that's why I, I was so pleased when I discovered I had this, is because I wouldn't have to cut it. It's all pinked on the edges, but, uh, and this, this works fantastically well, so. Uh, but normally you just get a piece of muslin, you can even just get it in bulk, get a yard of it or whatever, and, uh, or you can order it through book supply, but if you do that, then it's probably more expensive than you get at a fabric store. Well, I'm just thinking, I know they sell book binding tapes. Yes, that's, just the that's usually for the corners and edges or on the spine. Yeah. You can put book binding tape. In fact, um, I've got a bunch of them. This is book tape, four inch, three inch, two inch, and one inch. And my favorite is the four inch and this one. This one is good for like pocketbooks or where you have the wider spine and you need to uh, put the, protect that spine. And a lot of these, you need to have the spine protected. Yes. Peggy, I'd like to ask you, uh, would it be okay with you, given how you're trying to make your presentation, if the people in the audience
came up and gathered around where they could uh, yeah. be close and, and oh, watch I, what you're doing? The only thing is, then he can't. He yes. Needs. And Steve just mentioned that he, he needs a kind of a corridor so uh -huh. he can uh, videotape. What I think I'll do is to have whoever book that I work on, I'll have that person come up and work on. Is that okay? Is that good? Okay. And that should uh, hopefully each one of you brought a book. Or you can go over and grab one off the shelf that needs to be Thank you. And um, during the break, yes. uh, they like to, the library committee would like to take a look at some of the books. Oh, wonderful. That, need to work that was on. the whole so idea. Oops. They're arguing. Okay, the, this laminate strip, this is one of the heavier pieces, and you put it right in the spine here. Take the book cover and Now, what I... This is the one thing you need to be really careful of is to get that so it doesn't wrinkle up. Some place where we can press it open. Do you need a press, Peggy? I've got a couple of weights up here. edge wants to kind of bubble a little bit, which happens because the cover was pulled loose a little bit more. Somebody who didn't bring a book today wants to glue some of this in. Okay, did you bring a book? Okay. Um, okay, come up here and What do you want me to do, glue? <coughs> do the glue. Oh. Yeah. And the first okay. thing. Do the glue. You can see that this was not done well. What would be the first thing you do with this book? <laughs> Take the tape off. <laughs> Remove tape. Remove tape. Uh, and hope. What, what do you want me to do? Just work it with you? Does, does uh, Goo Gone help in that situation? Possibly. I'm, no, I'm not sure. Because that is an oil. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think scraping. Quietly scraping. That's what Linda does. Okay, just spray this one. <laughs> See, this will go half on each side. And you just glue. So glue here. That's why I said mix and glue here. The link line spray. With your gauze. And then you set your gauze on the book. Did you your Okay. Fine, so it's glued down. Yeah. Linda, yeah. Try to keep the cover as tight as you can. You we talk okay. about it. Should we make coffee? Let me go right. None of us know how to work the equipment. Uh, you know, you know, like see, and we'll try to get that whole thing on. So, and when you take this, that see that if you, you can get that the coffee so cover <laughs> sheet off that. That is bad. It's so good. I'm fine. I brought my lunch. Oh, okay. I got a soda. They just put a coffee. It is a coffee cup, but I like my soda in cups. Your color book tape, by the way, does just about what the duct tape does. It dries out, and then 
it comes loose and leaves the adhesive on the book. Isn't tape rather the last resort anyway? Uh, I use the clear tape as a protector. That would be like for high use uh, materials like in the library or something? Uh, they usually don't want you to use anything. Uh, what you do too in there is to take all of these little uh, layers of cardboard and you glue down each layer mm -hmm. of that cardboard and then pinch it together as tight as you can. Mm -hmm. And if you have a little clamp, it's even better. Uh, this one doesn't need it. Then what I like to do is to put a clear tape corner over it so it won't fray out again. Usually it won't. But uh, and also I can use it, I use it yeah, sometimes yeah. for the edges if they're all split out. You know, if you say it's thing. Down down in the book, hmm? you probably wouldn't want to put tape on because you'd never get it off without really yeah. 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 That's yeah. the beauty of I did the clear other side of the book tape. You can take it off. You can take it off and uh, replace it. <coughs> Question on the laminate. Can you, you said if you have a laminator, you know, save the scraps. You can, some, can you just buy the laminate? You know, sometimes you can buy them in the store just to do a self project, laminating yeah, project. Some. Yeah. Can you use those? I you brought them. Enough? Oh, you did. Okay. Wax <clears throat> paper's a lot cheaper. Wax paper, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I use this because it was a throwaway thing. Oh, right, yeah. And I found that it works better than wax it. paper. So save it. Yeah. Yeah, it's handy. Yeah. Now, the kind that you can get in a roll, you'd use to, to put over the whole cover to protect it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, this one, because it has no cover, you we can eat the. Hmm? You have to build one. Yes. And for that, I don't have any colored tape. That uh, color needs to be glued on. Uh, yeah. I have the the plasticized tape. What color do you need? For this, you need maroon. Brown. Maroon. Because we or black. we have some tape here. Uh, book tape. Okay. That's Lowell's book. You want some colored tape on it, Lowell? Sure. Anything to make it look better. Yeah. It's had a hard life. He wants to put it on the front shelf again. Well, we don't have any shelves big enough to hold it. Oh, dear. Well, yes. Then you lay it down. It's going to be coffee table pretty again. <laughs> it's getting all of this stuff off. And for that, Now, what kind of scraper is that? I call it my butter knife. I was <laughs> gonna. <laughs> it's I, I. The Petley knife I got at one of the, uh, like the pottery shops. Um, I don't know if this is that's where this came from. Um, <clears throat> and then I ordered some, but it was a long time ago. Yeah. But it's kind of thin, and yes, yet it's not yes. sharp on the edge. You could also use a pocket knife. Because all you're doing is scraping, scraping off the floor. Scrape off. Because this has got <coughs> this strapping tape. It's more than one kind of tape. Different kinds of tape. Multiple kinds of tape. Yes. But you just glue it. The tape will probably tell you the era that you fixed it. Yeah. I might have some children's books that I had when I was a kid with tape on them. Oh yeah, before they had magic mending tape. I brought one of my granddaughter my daughter's books for my great granddaughter. Show you what we do. Are you ready for it? Yeah, yeah the okay. Oh, okay. I love that fine, Mr. 
Okay, then I'm going to get him to fix this. Now what do you do okay. with this now? We'll just choose press it? Okay, we'll yeah. switch books, yeah. Okay. Just go around the screen. I'll let you know this one, I'll take it. You want me to do all that work because I put the duct tape on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, here's a little collection of tape if he wants to choose. Oh, I used monofilament tape yeah. before that. Uh, yeah, you have all kinds of tape on there. Yes. <laughs> now, for this, possibly this one would be, I think it'll be fairly white. All the others are small. <clears throat> and he doesn't want orange on it, I'm sure. So, but, there it is. for the day. Yeah. It was easier to lift 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> How many pounds is that? Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. I've never weighed it. <laughs> About 20. It's taking some of the cover off when I take so, some of the paint off. So what could yeah. you use if you don't if you don't have one of those, what could you use in place of that? Just a concrete block. So I'm saying bricks. Just a, something heavy, huh? Okay. Well, that's part this of mine, huh? Big cement. Block. Is this part of it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that must have been underneath. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> you can scrape that off too. <laughs> Thank you. But not the gold, not the rain. Just the <laughs> Maybe I should go over at my <clears> desk <throat> at my table and do the scraping while you work with somebody else, because this is going to take a while. Well, we can open this book and see what we can do with it. In my first book, book meeting with Linda, that's when we discovered there's an awful lot of scraping in this meeting. So did you do a lot of that? Did you have a lot of books in Remember, the sooner of what you start with, books? you get to come back and haunt you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't put duct tape on books. Don't. That's probably one of the main things. Mm -hmm. This is a movie about duct tape. That's everything, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Don't put any tape on a book, right? Any tape or just duct tape? Duct tape and... Uh, masking, tape. Masking, tape, <laughs> masking tape. Masking tape, strapping oh. tape. Masking tape. Any of these. <laughs> any kind of thing. Only book, only book tape. Oh, and the other thing you can always have handy, really to fix my desk. So how Super much? Nice. So the difference with book tape and all that other stuff is that duct tape dries out. So dries out. it's the chemical component of the tape that makes the difference. And sometimes, the, excuse me, the book repair tape will dry out. Yeah. Duck, I mean, uh, this tape doesn't as bad. The edges will get kind of messy after a while, but that you can just simply take off and redo it. What is that again? That's called book tape. That is called book tape. Scotch book Scotch. tape. Would the cleaner help? Would the cleaner, the, would the cleaner help with that? Uh, and when it gets off the bulk of it. When you get most of it off, okay. Then I'll try this. I think my wife used the monofilament tape on here. <laughs> yeah. Where's she at? Directions. <laughs> Low, lay no your strength, wife on that mess. There's no strength to it, the direction she used it, so I fixed it. I put duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> this Who's one that? is really not bad. It doesn't even need to be perfect bound or anything because the covers and the gauze are solid. 
and you look at it and there's no hairs in the gauze. So the main thing when you, you stand it up and you look at it like this and you see if this little, the decorative part here is glued down, you want that, just touch it with a couple of glue so it can glue down look nice because that you're never going to take off if you can help it. Uh, and you turn it over and you do the same thing. On this one, primarily all we're going to have to do, you glue down right in the edge here, just on the edges, maybe about that far in, just a little bit, and glue it down here. And then take your cover and set it back in place. Have it matched at the each end. So whose book is this? Let me come up here. Did you say, so if, if it wasn't attached, if you looked, if you fanned it open and looked inside, would you put glue down in there? Yes. I mean, if it was loose? Yes. Okay. But you never glue the spine part because then the book won't open, correct? Well, uh, some, a lot of, of um, well, publishers will glue the spine. Which was, well, can you step aside? Okay, I'll move. Okay, here. Um, Whoa. Oh. <laughs> uh, no. yeah. When you're through there, then try use a little bit on a paper towel and try. Yeah, see if you can use it. You want to wipe off any excess. Okay. Come on over there. We'll yeah. make this a workstation. Did you get to try the new project? Uh-oh, I'm kicking things from there. Right over there. I'm kicking them off. I'm winding the throw away paper towels until I've used well, them a few we're times. Trying to do that too, but, uh, so you See, when you glue this, and you just want it glued right along the edge, take your brush and just kind of drag it along. Okay. And just so it's just, then you can smooth it out a little bit. And I even have smaller brushes. This one we're going to try to clean it off. Okay. But we also need to glue all of this um, down to the cover yet. Okay. Now, <coughs> that, that book, well, it was in my mom's basement for years. Uh -huh. But also she had, as you can tell, there's some like mold. Is there mold? Okay. Because I know there was soot because she had like a furnace issue where there was soot everywhere. And so... Uh, would I take a paper, t how would, how would I, because you know you were saying about scraping the edges of the paper, because I know down oh, around the edges hot. it's like kind of black and you know, uh, I think like that's happy. from, mm -hmm. I think that's from that soot issue. <laughs> Can't read so that be, you got your glasses no. on, I've got to bring my glasses, oh. read the instructions. I see, there you go with the, results. with the take eraser. Working Try that and pliable. Wipe surface lightly in one direction. I said my sliding and scrolling evenly on the surface. After five or six strokes, reshape the cleaner by working the absorbed dirt into the cleaner itself. Cleaner may leave some crumbs that can be wiped off with a clean cloth or brush. Can I see the container? Here you go. Okay. I'm just grabbing it. Yeah, oh, this, is, this is like a putty. What size is this? Oh, it's like a putty. It's just a Yeah. 
I'm just kind of curious how that would work. I don't know. Well, the devices are so handy because you can find the product or something, mm -hmm. and then you go, oh, I remember that. Yeah, I don't remember anything. Mm -hmm. right. My battery's dead. Oh, no. Do you want to take a break? Sure, I'll have to. with this one what I'd like to do is to get it like this and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah uh, just can you make that other little it might not be little <laughs> small well if you don't have a concrete way, block you can use other books to pile up on top of another yeah book. yeah you can have a stack of books to put up against it put up against the wall on a table mm -hmm. same thing all you need is a flat surface for it to hold on one side, shove the books up, a stack of books on the other side, and it holds it in place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and on this one? Ha, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, on this one, the gauze is all crumpled up here and very, very nasty looking. So what we'll do is to take the cover and lay it back. And this one, because it is that really thin stuff and it's loose. If it's okay with you to open it up. Let's see how to prove it button. I think the main trance is just getting it started. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, where I like it. I guess. And not to be nervous. It's not so bad. Um, yes. After this book, it's still break. Okay. We may need one after this yeah. book. We <laughs> see <laughs> Take it and just, when you, oh. when you uh, are opening a book and it's a little reluctant, you just take your knife and you try to wiggle it back and forth. It's trying to loosen it up. This uh -huh. thing's stapled. You stapled your book too? Oh. I didn't staple it. It came stapled. Look at that. Okay. This book oh, was yeah, stapled together. Paul is finding things underneath that oh, tape. This is perfect binding. <laughs> uh, okay, the staples. I want to see that again. Okay. Yeah, you can see it on the other side. Open it up about oh, a good inch or more. We don't need no fancy string. We can staple it. No. <laughs> this is the way it was built. You see, yes. that's interesting. But stapling? It was well, stapled. By brand new, I didn't staple okay. it. So We're going to cut off this old crumpled up gauze. I don't know about this. So is this like a moldy book though that I should keep away from? What's that? Did you find any? It doesn't smell moldy. Just is that one. This is one we bought in 1963 or four. Stand it up like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't have it. Yeah, we have a box. I had a box of it. I showed her. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to try to replace it. This, this, it's mostly gone. 
Oh, I don't see that there's any. Okay. It says what it is on the front. Because now they've it's gone the clear down to the no. I don't see they need to keep that. Which would be about so seven and a half inches long. Oh, okay. That's what she's talking about. Okay, thank you. Oops. Two and three quarters inches, I think. Can you do it? About two and three quarter inches. About two and three quarter inches by two, two and two and three quarters. Now I've got already. Two and three quarters. I've got to write on that. By seven and a half. Seven and a half. Okay. Two and three quarters. Okay. So you can get in your map. We've got when you repair books. Oh, doesn't want to stand. No. Let's see, this is Anne. Okay. Oh, this is Anne. And if you put it in the box. Yeah, we Glue down in the sides. And because sometimes I really mess up, I like doing it inside. Did you see how this Actually, the pull the ink off of paper, mm -hmm. the pencil off the paper, you can see the commercial. Mm -hmm. 
When you perfect bind, and you're perfect binding an old book. This is an old book. When you're perfect binding an old book like this, where the gauze is all crumpled up and pulled loose, be sure when you cut off that gauze that you get the old gauze that's, and we did, I just trimmed it off at the edge. Um, but you have to get under those layers of gauze and under that strip down the spine. Because they'll, they'll, when you bind a book, you have a strip that goes down the spine that protects the, the spine. And uh, so you want to get under that yeah. and uh, under the gauze layers. And then you can go ahead and glue down the side on both sides and then glue the back, the spine, and then put your gauze on and then glue that gauze down the spine on the side again and then down uh, the spine itself. Can you explain the difference perfect binding that you're talking about in other methods. Uh, well, uh, for like a paperback book, you can glue, glue down the spine of the book, set the book into the cover, and then... Is that called perfect binding or is that called something else? That's just binding book. But perfect binding is putting the gauze on the book. And having that space and so that it's flexible and opens? Yes. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Unless you mess up. And then it's a little stiff. You can still open it. You have to just kind of work out through a little bit. How do I do this? Okay. Now we close it up. Now we're just going to leave it like this, laying open, because I want that other side to dry really good, and we can do any touch-ups mm -hmm. like in here. What I try to do is to get that laid down a little bit, and then just when it dries and sets, okay. then you can. I go ahead and I do the the top side. I want to be sure that it's in just right. And sometimes if you do both at the at once, uh, one side will be too tight. So I just try to be on the safe side because I messed up too many times in the past. Now is this page? Do, do this these, one will these glue it. Well, well, glue tip. Pages. No, just the two. Oh, just the two. Okay. okay. When you glue tip a page, like this one to glue it in, you glue just glue tipping is just gluing right on the edge of that. Like you just go right along the edge, just a really really thin little line, and then you set it in properly, and leave your book open when you do it. Or you can have it propped like this. But if you close it up, a lot of times that page will push out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So do we just leave it right now or do we I would just, just leave wait it right now. now. And okay. Just let it dry. Okay. And it takes a while to dry. Yes. So repairing books is takes an art of patience because every time you glue anything you have to wait. <laughs> glue and wait. Okay. Okay, the next one, let's do this one. Are we going to take a break, Steve? Oh, yes. Steve? 
questions? I'm sorry, I haven't even looked at your list here. <laughs> yeah, oh, we noticed. Yes. You might want to take a drink of water anyway, they're talking a lot. Yeah, do you want to take a break? Yeah, oh, wait. Yes, and there's uh, goodies back there for you to try. Yeah. Okay, so it's break time. I left my pencil there. Do you want to keep my pencil there in case you need I, it? You know, I'm afraid of, I break it. I'll just use the pen. Okay. It's a little sturdy. Okay. okay. We're rolling. And, uh, See that that's the I Whose book? To, I have to book Whose it. book is two years before the mass? That's mine. And uh, you can do everything you want to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to come up here? Well, what? I've been up there once, maybe somebody else, because it's got a lot of, it's got loose pages, and it's been uh, sewn, and so these, uh, these pages right here, normally you would sew them, but if the threads are gone, and the pages are all individual, you can't really sew them. In order to sew pages, for the most part, you have to have a signature. And a signature in a book is this, the group of pages that are printed and then folded in half. In half, in half. Just, well, usually just in half. However many. <laughs> you only see the part that's folded half. And then you, you sew through the back, through the, the, uh, through the center of that to the back of the book. And you do it before it's bound. If it's, if it's solidly bound and you need to glue in one signature, you can sew it and then just glue tip that whole signature in. Be sure you get the glue in all of those little threads, the holes for the threads. And I used to uh, really like to sew children's books. And uh, got calluses in the palm of my hand mm -hmm. because, first of all, Sometimes you have to punch holes in it. And sometimes it's really difficult because there's a lot of paper. And so I would build up calluses. And Steve got this little one for me, which is really cute. And it's very sharp, which is wonderful. Is it an awl? It's an awl. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also make an awl, I guess, is by taking a nail and cutting off the, uh, the head of the nail and then driving it into the handle. Now this one I got at a uh, antique store and it's a, an ice, an ice pick. Yeah. So you really you can, for a lot of the tools that I use, you can go to Harbor Freight or a hardware store or your husband's toolbox, which is great, or your toolbox if you do woodwork. You can get your sandpaper, your rulers, uh, your awl, a hammer, uh, just uh, you know your knives. You can get them out of out of the, the toolbox. Did you ever try uh, drilling the screw the hole? Save your hand. Uh, it's hard to keep. You have to be very careful at keeping. If you keeping had a vice, and everything. Yeah. I oh, made nice. a vice one time, and I had to leave it at school. Uh, actually, the, the wood shop made the vice for me. Yeah, I drew the plans. Press too. Yeah, you just uh, to make yourself a vice for for uh, books that you want to sit in and, and drill through the middle, using a drill or or an awl. Uh, just take the two pieces of board, and you have uh, the sides, uh, two boards in each side, and then you put the two another two boards inside that you want ample length of the book, of any book, so you make them probably a foot, foot and a half long. And uh, then glue and, so, and uh, nail them in place. So you have that, the base coming right together. You want just maybe this much of a separation in the center. If it's too much, your book will go through. Mm -hmm. If you have it in there, the uh, smaller books or skinnier books. So you use that to sew? And I use it to drill the holes so that I can sew. I don't 
use it and sew that in that because it'd be too difficult. Usually you have the flat board underneath so the two boards can be nailed down or glued down. And then the vise held in place. Uh, I was, we were talking about laminate earlier and I found this in school supplies and it's clear laminate. And when you use laminate to cover a book, you start out the size of the book that you want or the size of the laminate for that book. And then you start out right, right at the edge and you pull it back, you inch it back. Very, just a very small amount at a time. And you smooth it down and you use either a ruler, like this would be great, or you can use a bone and your hands. And keep smoothing that down and smoothing it down and just keep moving the laminate back so you keep covering it more and more and more and get to the spine. And then be sure it's right at the edge of the table and smooth it down over that spine. Leaving the groove on each side of your spine, you know that indentation. And to get, a, get some good ones, you can use knitting needles, as someone suggested, or because I don't knit, although I have knitting needles, uh, use skewers. I love skewers because I use them for gluing instead of a brush because they're narrow and you can get it down in narrow places down in the spine. And uh, you, whereas you can't use a larger brush sometimes. And you can get a whole packet of them like this. And the others, if you want to, you can use them for making kebabs. Uh, the, uh, the thread that I used, this was some of my sister-in-law's thread because she had one of these big industrial machines. She was an incredible seamstress. This is waxed linen thread, which I, you can use, I don't really care for too much, but it would be a good idea. It's regular book thread. But I also use just a Dacron thread, anything that's really durable, heavy duty, will work. I raided my sewing box for all my heavier threads. And the other thing that you really need a lot of, okay. but only use, this is the wrong one. This one I do it to hold, uh, just things in place like the cover or something that I want, I don't want it to move on me. I will use this clear tape. On pages, only, only, only magic tape. Because all the other tapes have an oil in them and they will, over time, they will, that's why you see pages that are taped with old, old books and that tape kind of oozes up and it may have one little strip down the center that's still sticky and still good, otherwise it's just dry and brittle. So magic tape does not do that. It also, when you put it on, it's not glossy and so it disappears on the page. If it's all, if you can find it, which I prefer, is the, the half inch or three quarter inch. The one inch is awfully wide and when you do glue pages, or tape pages I mean, that is kind of an, at an angle tear, do short pieces because you can hold the book, the page in place, and if not, you've got a shorter amount for you. Sometimes, because you can't lift it up and take the ink off, the, the, uh, the numbers and letters and whatever. So you have to cut it. But uh, uh, then you can just, you can tape over it when you have to. Sometimes the page, you'll, it'll look like it's right together, but when you tape it and you open it up, you'll find there's a little space, which is very frustrating. So you really, when you do tape pages, torn pages, you have to make absolutely sure that that page is right together. And if you do short pieces, you can get, get it and then you can keep working with it as you go down. Because usually it's down to the bottom of the page or to the top of the page. So 
So, and on this one, needs to be perfect bound. But first of all, you need to go through and get the the pages that have been that are loose and glue tip them back in place. Because when it's only one page, you don't need to go in and uh, sew the whole signature back together. And your book will go a better chance of going together. A little better. But you have to go through it first and check to make sure that you get any loose pages glued back in. And glue tipping is one of the most common things that you can do. So, so when the pages are individual, you have to glue tip each one? Uh, or you can do a couple of them at a time. Don't do too many more than that. And be sure you, you're glued. Now this one, and I would fix the pages before they go in, because like this one needs to be taped along the edge. And to get those little fold overs all out and everything, so. When you're checking it in, how do you know how much glue to put in? Very small amount. What I do for glue tipping, Oh, so it goes without saying, you better be at your pages in the right order. It's a good idea. <laughs> Otherwise, you could end up with a book that doesn't make any sense at all. You know, that's possible. You get so enthralled with the technique. Forget, forget about, about the page the, number. Forget, forget your number. Or something. <laughs> That's what I was telling you about that box of books that were all in pieces. Yeah. We had to be very, very careful with pages. See that I'm going to put these all together. And I'm not going to do it any other time. Okay. Always have a jar bottle of water when you're doing something like this. Because if you let you lay your brushes down and let them dry, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work too well. Also, if you have bristles that are starting to come out already, pull them out. Okay. I'm going to do these just a couple at a time. Okay. So how many is that, like two or three? You just, yeah, this is just a couple. And you just simply either drag your brush along, because you just want a little speck of glue on the edges. Not much, because you don't want it to go up into the pages. I have been guilty of that. Turn it over so you can make sure that all of the uh, bottom page is also got a little bit of glue on. And 
and just lay it in place. And I put a piece of laminate on it. How far in toward the spine do you put that laminate? Uh, as close as you can get it. Okay. Just so that it doesn't uh, go beyond the glue, because then you're gluing to the laminate. Which it won't stick. It takes time. If you try to hurry at something, that's when it seems to uh, mess up. And it's just dragging your brush along the edge. So if you had a book like that that had 15 or 20 pages that needed to be glued, you would glue a couple at a time and, and then Maybe let it dry a little and then add more pages until you got finished? Uh, it probably would be a good idea, just to make sure that all of them got right in close to the spine. And when you do that, I notice you didn't put the laminate in between these pages you're gluing. I'm going to put it on top. Yeah. If you have just a really thin, thin strip, and then I'm just going to close up the book. And let it set. And let that dry. And then you can go through and get another page further into the book and pull it. It just you just need to do it one step at a time trying so that you can get the pages in right and have them setting there like they should be. Because of the time element, I'm going to wait for this one. This one's going to be difficult because the spine's missing and also the front of the cover is missing. So what you probably should do there is to... Where did it go? The boxes? The box of tape? The box of tape. Ah. Okay. And here's more tape. Okay, anything to cover it up. And buckram tape or tape like this. Uh, you could be able to use something like this. Or if you can go to a some shop where you can get material. I'm a sewer. I have lots of fabric. Uh, do you have any laminate? Laminate is the best because then you can even wipe it off. Oh, it gets you mean messy. like vinyl, like uh -huh. upholstery fabric? I, yeah, I, I mean do. vinyl. Uh, yeah, like the, uh, if you can get the the uh, the brown vinyl, or some in other colors, I guess. Uh, I know at Hancock's, they have this beautiful Hancock's out of this. I know. But we have Fabric Depot here. Worry not. I have not been there, so. <laughs> but you could go there, and when you do that, you want to cut the cut it about an inch 
beyond the edges of the book. Okay, then you can fold the spine. Oops. You have to uh, fold it so that it's underneath at each end, so you have a good fold on that. And then bring it around to the sides, and you glue it down to the cover. You can take the old material off, glue it down, and then you would fold that. Uh, you can lay it open. You can take the book cover off completely. Then don't cut, don't cut, cut the laminate. You could just fold it under on all sides, and then you would cut it on the corners so that you could fold the corners and have them meet mm -hmm. at a point. Mm -hmm. you know? And then you can go ahead and put the inside your in of the cover, the liner of the cover, over that and glue it down. And let each with each step though, when you put the glue on the cover, on the hard cover, you put it down and, and wait. Let it dry completely. Make sure there's no bubbles or anything in it. And then when it's all dry, then you can go ahead and um, perfect bind that gauze down into the sides of the book. Mm -hmm. And then you glue that, the gauze, to the inside of the cover on each side. Mm -hmm. And then when that dries, then you put your, your cover liner, the inside cover of your book. So I can save that, that print. Save your, your cardboards. That's critical and then if you want to go ahead and use this it's in pieces what you're saying is, the little book's mine this, this okay <laughs> what you're saying is i can take this off yes because it'll probably come off see you if you're if you do it really careful okay. when you take this off you can usually sometimes get it off save as much as the liner okay. on each the cover as possible mm -hmm. Do you have a suggestion for an inexpensive liners? So in, I think they're called in papers or mm -hmm. something like that. Do you have a? What do you think about using copy paper? Or should we use uh, cardstock uh, or something? More of a uh, artist paper. It's what I like. It's a, not as heavy as cardstock, but it's it's heavier than uh, copy paper. Copy like twenty four just too thin. Twenty four weight. Because I was able to buy twenty four weight at uh, FedEx. Even about like this, uh -huh. uh, which I think is an artist paper. Mm -hmm. Just I used to get my sketch <laughs> sketchbooks and uh, sometimes use paper for so that. So, so artist paper is less than cardstock. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Or you could find something else. Anything that you think will be as close to your, a little bit heavier than the pages, or just as close as you can get to the pages just to cover up the inside of the book, uh, inside of the cover, because you don't want that. Usually it's a gray cardboard, yeah. and you don't want that. So, and on this one, what I would take, if you can get any, like Steve, you said it was filament paper. Mm -hmm. I had this, and it's a plast plasticized paper, but I got it probably 35 years ago. Uh, anyhow, I would use that for covers on books like this, soft bound books that don't have a back cover, and I would make a back cover. But you can also get other, other cardstock if you wanted to, I suppose, and use yeah. it because it'll work just as well. Uh, Teslin. Teslin paper. Teslin paper, okay. Yeah. And on the spine, uh, this has been stapled and torn apart. Some of it will be difficult because when they tore it apart, well, first of all, you have to tape off the pages that have been torn because some of them in here, the pages are torn. Mm -hmm. So you want that, but don't get it right next to the spine within about an eighth of an inch, maybe sixteenth of an inch even because you want to be able to glue it, and glue will not stick to tape. Mm -hmm. But then you probably found that out already. So, uh, and then you can go ahead and just uh, re-glue the spine. Uh, this one was stapled, 
What you can do that makes it harder to open is to use an awl and, or a stapler or use an awl and poke holes in it and sew it. But again, it's going to be harder to open. So you might just go ahead and trim off all the paper here and then glue it back into the cupboard. Just glue it together, all together. You could put some gauze on it just to reinforce it and then just put either a tape cover using the book tape or uh, some type like that and put cardstock on the back for, to, for a back cover. One of the things I did with my books is got it glued together and then I took a hacksaw and cut grooves uh -huh. across the back and then laid thread in it and glued it in. Right, and some people have done that. I've seen it on And it seems to be helpful. Uh, yeah, I tried that on books early on mm -hmm. because that's the way my boss did it. And then I found out the pages had come out oh. easier. And so then I started sewing them because he would cut off all the all the holes for the sewing, for the stitch marks. Ooh. And I thought, no, I wouldn't do that. No, that doesn't make sense. So yeah. I didn't say anything like, oh, no, George, I don't do it that way because it doesn't work. <laughs> he wouldn't have appreciated that. <laughs> so my book, this cover is damaged. I have to replace this whole card. card is the corner off? Yeah, yeah it's missing. But this is, much this the, is the result of a puppy chew. Ah, yeah. We you hand that back up to me? Yes. Can that be reinforced or it oh, should yeah. be replaced? Yeah. Why don't you get an old book and see if you can cut it okay. down to the same size? Yeah, you, it's, it's, if you do this, it's still not, it's not going to be as strong. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. At, at the last resort, you can just turn it page around so that this corner's out here so the bottom. Yeah, but it's... You, you know, still see thing. it. Yeah. <laughs> do you do that to Washington Irving? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you need is uh, an old book. Any old book that you're going to get rid of that you want to discard. Take the cardboards out first and save them. So that I would, you can I would, I would guess you books. could go to used bookstores and they would have books that they also, don't want. Also, the thrift shops have. Yeah. Yes. But sure. well, you had mentioned that you had some that you were going to get rid of. So whenever you have to get rid of a book, just don't get rid of the cover. Because yeah. you can peel off all the, what you do is you peel off all the cardboard on it. I mean, not cardboard, but the covering on it. The material cover on it. <laughs> because you don't need that. And uh, all you want is just the cardboard inside. So, uh, and we have a few books here. I'm gonna take the easiest one first. <coughs> I just like to get the easiest ones out of the way. Uh, there is Well, maybe not. Okay. This one, the first thing you do when you get a book, the very first thing, stand it up, look down the sides, and see if the cause is all in place, the, the perfect binding, and see if this is glued down, this little trim. You can make them, but it takes, like, this one needs to be glued down. You can see where it's open. And other than that, it just needs to be glued down on the sides and get it put back together. So this is a real easy one to do this. I love skewers. When I started out, I pretty much have been self-taught 
in trying to get a book put back together like it was originally made. Although one time we got a whole set of books, brand new books. And as I looked at them, every single one of them need to have corners reinforced and the spines. They don't make them like they used to. That was when they had, yeah, and exactly. You have a cloth cover, it lasts a hundred times longer. The paper covers that cover the a hardcover book, but with a paper cover on it, are terrible. And even, that even one, though they're glued on, yeah, wow. yeah, it's it's just that they're a paper type cover. It's cheap. Isn't the glue different now than it used to be? Uh, it seems like the glue doesn't stay. It dries out really fast. Like you can see whole volumes of books that are, you know, I guess you call them the paperback books, and they they all seem to disintegrate. Where you get a book that's 50 years old or 100 years old, and it's still glued. Yeah. Isn't that true with about everything, though? <laughs> Almost everything you get now that you have that problem with, it seems like. It's called built-in obsolescence. And obsolescence. Yeah. <laughs> they make it so that it will break down and, and fall apart or disintegrate, so you'll have to buy a new one. And on these, you don't glue straight down the back, you glue down the sides. And you put something underneath, so you glue all over your table. The table with that uh, we used at this high school that I went to, somebody had put a piece of linoleum on top of the table and it worked really good because it was easy to clean. And I had a student who had one finger on each hand and his feet were the same way. It was a birth defect. Mm -hmm. And when he came to me, they said, I don't know what he can do. And I said, well, Doug, is there anything that you are uncomfortable with? And he says, well, Answering the phone. I said, okay, that's fine. We can work with that. The phone was two rooms over from mine. Later on, I got my own, but at that time, I didn't. It took about mm, maybe less than a week. He was running over to the next room to get the phone. There wasn't anything. The other kids all had all their fingers. Who would they ask to thread the needles? The guy with Doug. <laughs> exactly. He'd stick it underneath the linoleum and thread it. He became a mechanic. He loved working on cars. He had to hold a screwdriver like this. But he went to uh, Arizona Tech School to be a mechanic, and he worked for John Deere for a while. By the way. No, so, was this a class you taught the students, or were these students yes. volunteers? No. Oops. This was a class of bookbinding, and uh, like later on it became a class where if they had a student with problems, okay. couldn't fit in with other students, I got them, which was fine, because with me, the one time that this happened, uh, he was the only one, it was my planning period, and he was the only student I had in there, and we got along really good. I never had a problem with him. But it was also a good class for the kids just to talk and feel relaxed. you have a sense of accomplishment when you see when you take something and fix it or build it or something like that. Absolutely. That's why I always said I had the best job in the world. I had uh, carpal tunnel surgery done on both wrists. I took one day off the beach one.
And you were back repairing books the next day? I took off Friday to have it done. Monday, I worked. I'd go in and later in after school, get the stitches out, go back to work. The bad one was the second one they told me I had to go in without a bandage on it. I said, I work with books. I work with dirty, dusty books. And I said, well, put the least amount that you can get away with. So I put a strip of gauze like this and put tape around this part of my hand and around this part and freaked out the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I had a friend who was going to take nine weeks off for one carpal tunnel. And mm -hmm. Holy cow. You just want the time off, that's all. Well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, they, in order to get a substitute person for, to fill my position, one time he let the kids do anything they wanted while he sat on a chair or a stool at the front of the class. They were climbing my bookcases. They were just raising cane all day. I said, never again. If I can't get somebody who knows what they're doing, then lock it up. So that's what they did. And then I got an assistant so they could know what I was doing. <laughs> okay. Also, use your hands and push things back into place so that you have, just eyeball it. You want that cover a little bit beyond the pages as much as you possibly can get it. Peggy? Yes. We have a book here that has this uh, code in it, and we've, we've tried to repair some of these books, and we have a, a lot of trouble keeping, you know, like getting everything straight, bring it getting up the here? pages straight, and then to maintain this code that... Would you bring it up here? Just pass it up? Yeah. Lock it up? We'll bring it up. <laughs> bring it up. <laughs> I don't want to trip on all your wires there. <laughs> You can go back this way. Wow. This one's this side's pretty trapped. Yeah. Oh, you mean the Uh-huh. Okay. It is made that way. Uh -huh. But it's very difficult to, when you're gluing to, to try to maintain it and where you use presses and everything and so it's just a lot of fiddling. You just push it back in there as much as you can and then put your weight on top. But this one, I would suggest putting like several books uh, and not putting like a thousand pounds of pressure or anything like that on it. So you don't like book presses? You'd rather have weights? I, well, I had, I use my book presses all the time. I stack up textbooks like this. And what I do a lot of times to save room, to, to be able to save time and everything, I would put the books in back to back. So I'd have two for each layer. But when you do that, also you need to have, uh, you know, these press board uh, things that you use for passing around, say, forms for people to fill out and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a bunch of those, and I had taken off the things on the ends, the clips on the ends. So we, we just had the boards, and you use those boards in between each layer of book, and it really helps. So it just evens things out? Yeah, and it keeps them nice and flat, you know, or like this one would be a groove. But it just, it, it distributes the weight. When you put a weight on it, then it distributes that weight through the whole book. And uh, not just maybe on, just like if you have a short book on top of another one, and then the rest of it doesn't get that pressure, mm -hmm. and you need to have pressure. Yeah, and this one, well, uh, glue tipping. Oops. 
glue this back in. The other thing that's hard to match is that this where it's kind of colored, and that's hard to match because that's from age and also from the type of material they use. But all, when you do this, you'd have to glue this in, which you really need the uh, pressure on the book part itself, on the book itself, because you've got the paper that has been folded over that needs to be glued down to the cover. When you do that, you've got to make sure that that this part, first of all, looks like we have another page that get the folds out of the page. Your pages will bunch up and fold up near the spine, and then when you glue it, and guess what? <laughs> you, have a, you have this fold in it. So you just have to go through and make sure that all the pages are lined up just right. Glue the edge where you can. If it needs to be perfect bound, once you get that that edge glued in, then when you open it up and perfect bind it, uh, you've got everything together like it should be. And then you can glue the perfect binding into the sides of the cover. Yes. Okay, now I think one of the questions we didn't ask was, okay, you have a book like that, but it's all come apart, and you've got to put the signatures back together. How do you get that curve? You sew your signatures, so, and then you can glue along the edge, or just, or you, so that it'll stay and glue it in place. And then when you get it all put together, then you can perfect bind it. Yeah. But when you put it in, then you make sure that you just push it back you in. Just push, you just kind of do it by eye. Yeah. Okay. And uh, push it in. Well, how just do you be sure to find that while it's drying? You don't. You set it down. You push it in, set it down. Be sure you've got pressure on, on it. Top. Yeah. Not just the book press, but weight. Uh, you need a, I would use the weights. You could, you could just try it. But well, I would use the weights simply press. because I... <laughs> yeah, that's the, the thing. Yeah, they're having a lot of trouble just using the press. So you're saying With weights. that specific book. With this specific one, I think I well, just use the weights. Or just use the weights. Yeah. Because you can observe it more and you can loosen it up. And if you see that it's starting to ooze out, sometimes your presses will put so much weight on it, it will redistribute the pages like you really yeah, didn't want to. Yeah. So I, uh, it's it's kind of trial and error. See what works for you. But uh, I like the weights. And I don't have the presses with me, so this is, you know, kind of a no-brainer with me because uh, the only ones I have are my two weights and he books. He has a, a press there. Uh-huh. Well, Hmm? Yeah, your presses, your presses are behind you. I see them. He got a bunch of presses that he's made for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Some new. You're not getting a lot of pressure. Yeah, well, you can use that uh, definitely for like pocketbooks too. You can use that. Because you can line them up, get them in there, slam it down, and get more pressure on it than you could just even putting books on top. So, yeah. For this one, I think I just, because you've got to work with it with your hands so much, I would just use uh, either books, stack of books, or some weights or something. Always glad to use gravity machine. Is that one of the books? Is that for here? Is that one of the library books? This one is uh, yes. one of books from here? Yes. Speedball press. Yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't for this one. No. But for some of them. They're coming up out with new things all the time. Got an awful ragged ridge, doesn't it? Yeah. 
But you know, you know where it goes back because it'll fit the other part, right? Yeah, just put it in. Putting a jigsaw. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, but that costs a whole lot more than most. I want you to make it. <laughs> I want you to make it. Pay attention. Well, oh, you want me to make one? No, I don't. They do. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can make a vice, Why too. Why don't you email that to him? Um, I'm sure you can make one of these. It's like you want to get that lift, though, right? Mm -hmm. You don't sound like you believe that, Steve. Probably can. <laughs> I'm sure he's, he's very crafty. <laughs> you can make the vice. Huh? You can make a vice also. Well, this is the closest vice I make. <laughs> no, but I mean, what you have to have oh, them like yeah, this. Oh, yeah, I can make something like that. Could you use the vice to tip in pages? Would that help? Would that be counterproductive? No, I, you possibly could. Uh, I just lay it down. And I, then I can get them in and work them in just right. And I don't know if you can see it, but I use the the edge of my skewer for glue tipping. Use the other end for tucking it in. Mm -hmm. I like multiple tips. And then piece of strip of laminate. Or wax paper. Then you can turn it over and work on the other end. Okay, this one. This one has been kind of peeled out. Where it's been, the paper has been pulled loose, the little strips that have been pulled loose, go back in and just uh, use some magic tape on them, that part. when the page wants to keep pushing out. <laughs> I 
Completely out of the cup. This one needs to be perfect bang, bound. I cut the gauze. All the pages are intact. It just plain came out of the cover. And again, the the gauze tore because I used just the gauze. And now you're gluing up the spine. You got a sorry. All the pages are attached. All the pages are okay. And then you're going to put the gauze on there. Then I'm going to let it dry. This is where your, your vice, where you can hold the yes, stand. Yes, to hold it up. Yeah. Works really use, good. You could use one of these to hold it up. Well, it wouldn't stand on any that's all very well. First of all, you glue the spine, and then you put the gauze on, and you glue the gauze down. Is it possible you could use that modern, some hodge podge glue to do some of that? I, you know, I don't know. It depends on, you want something that's a little more flexible, and blue glue, uh, book glue is a little more pliable. Yeah. I don't think much part would work. Yeah. Just some variables there. Then you just take it like this and you lay it down so it's overlapping the table. Let it dry. Problem is I left you guys now with a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's You could come over here and show them how to do this tape thing on this one. Oh, but you wouldn't be in front of the camera. Uh, no, I wouldn't. That's true. That's true. Okay. 
uh, I would on that one I would glue that piece of backing down on because I think your all the binding and everything is pretty good. Yeah. So uh, you're saying I should glue this? Glue it on front. just the edges. Just the edges. On the edge. Well, I'm here. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. Nope. Uh, the, actually, the binding on it is really good. So it's really solid. So, but what you want to do is to glue on the edges here on both sides because you you don't want to glue it all the way down on the spine if, if you ever need to get it off. Yes. To rebind it to put the uh, perfect binding where you glue the gauze on and tuck it down inside the cover. Because that's the gauze that you tuck down inside each the cover on each side is what's holding that book together. And this one, it still has everything. In fact, it's been sewn, it's been stapled, it's been glued. Uh, they've done everything possible to the, to it. But we gluing down the but edges, we managed to destroy it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and glue it right down. Try to match up where wherever it was or something. Yeah, right about there because you've got the groove right here. Okay, so, so it will glue down on each side, and then he can take the darker tape, the black tape, and go over okay, down to I that point. And you can glue it just to this point, and then like this one. Uh, and then you can take clear book tape and go over the whole thing and bring it down on the sides about this far. And you cut, cut it beyond this much so that you can cut it and turn that under on the side so you have hinges okay. to uh, hold it better and smooth it down. That's the way I would do it in trying because it's really important to salvage this one little piece because it has the name of the book on it. So if you have it on the shelf you want that you want to be able to read it and say oh yeah there it is. Okay, There's my when atlas. You, when you put the tape on uh -huh. do you want it like this or do you want to have these up and Flat. See, they're flush now. Right. If it's up, why are the, the pages are very short? No, you can lay it down and do it. You do one side at a time. Just kind of put it on the side and wrap it around, then turn it over to the other side. Okay. So you can lay it flat. Shall I glue this? Shall I do this yes. now or shall I wait? Sure. You can do it now. Here, you, I think you've got glue on the other side. Good. Let's put the glue. Here, just do it. Oops. Here, lay your book down and then take the t this piece off and glue it on the edges, just along the edge. Would you use your skewer for that? Uh, you could, but I think put th this because you want a little strip of it. Oh, okay. A little bit better. A little bit more. Okay. And then also he can lay his the skewers afterwards after he gets it done. Lay the skewers down on each side of the spine here and put a rubber band around each end and hold them in so you can hold the skewers in place is all you need the rubber bands for. And then lay it down and uh, put pressure on the whole thing so that you, you have the indentation on your books mm -hmm. along the spine. So would he do it after he tapes this up? I mean, after he glues this yeah. up, can he put the? Yeah. And then and leave here. the skewers there when he tapes it. So tape around the foot. Well, for right now, he needs to. It's not sticking with the car. Yeah. Hold on, Jeff. Hold on, Jeff. I need to, I need four more, four or five more fingers. Yeah. Now wrap it around. Did you glue both sides? Yeah. Okay. Wrap it around. And then you can take it over, lay it down, and put a couple of books on it or something. Mm -hmm. Anything for weight. I could put a clamp on it. Okay, I know this one.
Dr. Shovelhorst. I don't know, I got it right. <laughs> Maybe if you kept it over the edge, it would keep it over there. How's that? Yeah. We'll see. But it's like that, the one thing you can do is. See, I know how my wife uses this, so this back edge is not useful. <laughs> <laughs> I should explain to you that it says it's the World Atlas. The, the maps in there show railroads, not highways. It uh, shows uh, political subdivisions and that stuff, but it's railroad tracks. My grandson would love that. But he uh, drives truck along the railroad tracks and sprays herbicide. Right now he's in Texas. He's been in Texas for quite a while. It, it, since this was published in the early 60s, right, it shows a lot of railroad tracks that no longer exist. Yeah, they've taken out all of the ones around Yakima. Yeah. It and and it's a got geological things. significance because a lot of people worked on the railroads or rode the railroads traveled by the railroad, and they mentioned that, and so you can see where they might have gone. And that might give you a clue of where they might have settled or in intermediate points. When I got the map, I, I was really disappointed. I wasn't, we weren't into genealogy then. I wasn't into railroads then. And railroad maps, that's no good. I want highways. Of course, in those days, you've got highway maps free from the service stations, so they didn't care. So that's... Hmm? And it's Encyclopedia Botanica World... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it was Compton's Encyclopedia that this came with. We bought them, 63 or 4. And uh, this came with it. Great. And we still have the encyclopedia set. If I, I want to look up something that's not really current, I trust it further than I do Wikipedia. Well, years ago, usually they agree. But we got the world book because when I was a kid, I would take a stack of world books. We didn't have books except the world book. And I would take, oh, six or seven world books into my bedroom and just read and just pour over them. And, uh, oh yeah, they're fun to, the encyclopedia is fun to read. Yeah. You can get, you can get quite involved. But the world book has a lot of pictures. Yeah. Oh, you glued more pages than that one. I just glued the end sheet down. It was torn out. Okay. And so I glued it back down, but I don't want it to, because I'm trying to match it to where it originally was. You're using your uh, rulers as weight? Well, I want to prop it over. I'm trying to figure out what I can use to prop it over. I need to cut in for a second, please. Uh, how many people to make a copy of this presentation? It's 50 pages of paper. How many people need Can you make a copy of the uh, slides? Yes, we will. We, we will do that. Pardon? I'm sorry? just do a couple. And make sure that we have a copy that's going to stay here in the library for people to use as guidelines. For use it as a reference? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. I think and it's two. Um, okay. Two? Okay. Yeah. We'll make two. And I, I drew all my own sketches in here for the diagrams. So it, hopefully it will help a little. We'll also have one on the name. How many pages is it? 50. Five zero. And they're not in PDFs or anything? We'll keep no, it. We can make it. I love that PDF. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. <laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody <laughs> sucked in the I know what PDF is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ask you what P stands for. But. So, question. <laughs> what now that like, mine is over there drying and everything, uh -huh. what will I do next? Let's see. Yours is right. this one. Yeah. Okay. okay. See where it's pulled loose in the cover here? Yeah. Okay, you'll bring that up. And you're going to just simply take that gauze and glue it down to the cover. So, let me see where the. Open watch. I, I know I need to. Because I don't know if I can. Okay, first of all, because I have pages loose. Yes, that's what I want. First of all, I'm going to glue tip this page back in with the skewer. So, can you. Yes, I love my skewers. <laughs> you can just drag it along the edge yeah, there. Yeah. And you just roll the skewer along. Oh, so it's the yeah. loosens off the skewer. Uh -huh. Oops. And you can also catch drips. Oh. You just turned off the computer. Well, I thought the The projector? Yeah. What I mm -hmm. So now that page is in. Projector's yes. And we glue this is all of this. We're going to have to glue the entire oh, okay. cover. Yeah, okay. but this is all got okay. right on And glue up here, and then we'll put the gauze oh, in before it's set. So, okay, so first you're going to glue all of this. Uh -huh. for a long time. And then okay. we just glue yeah. in yeah. here, and then we'll take no this gauze oh, and set it down in there. Oh, I see. Before this comes down. Uh -huh. And then, and then the projector was running off. Of of it was running off of the other app. Here. Oops, sorry. Apparently, we have to pull, pull that right into the edge there. And yeah. it doesn't it's smell like it's moldy. Yeah. So, what you yeah. might do too is to just to make sure. Mm -hmm. Spray a little nice on the paper towel and wipe it off. Not okay. so you're getting this wet, but so you get power to you okay. get power here. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and do that? Power to that. We got okay. power to the projector. Okay. Which I see the lights. And I just switch those. Just yeah. do the glue. Yeah. Do that. Is and it not? The other is, is it already? Oh, look. Yeah, the other one's already glued tipped. Yeah. Okay. So now I just have to get. Them. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just gluing myself. And is there a non here? Okay. That's okay if I go oh, myself. My Do I go all the way to the uh -huh. all, all the way to the edge the there? Why don't um, you, you can peel back? Oh, okay. You um, just redo the whole go. thing. Yeah. So all the way so to the edge. You can pull it all off. Great. Oh, okay. The one that I was that I was plugged into isn't working. Is this about the right? It's thickness? blinking now. Uh huh. Perfect. It is oh, blinking. It was no, blinking. Oh, blinking. Yeah. 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 Well, so that's because the battery is completely dead. Oh, okay. turning on the battery. Oh. Uh, these are two battery cells. And oh, okay. But it was plugged in. Well, it's got. It's getting. It's getting electricity now, so it will be charging. Right. My point is, though, it was running off of the cells because there was no juice going into. It. And the reason for that is but because he switched, of that. He I switched them. The he switched them. Switched and them. And this, 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 right, and right, this, right. this, and this were loose. Yeah, I believe okay. that. I believe that's the problem. So hmm. when I spray uh, the Lysol, I no. can just do that later. Just, then, yeah, hmm? and put it yeah, just on the paper there, there. The door. Now, yes, right. we, we, put it we on pushed the them together because so. it's too too much that's moisture. Odd. Okay, right. You, want, you don't want any moisture. You just want so, uh, I mean, to do the, the I killing. Believe you have power to there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's to kill off anything that might be. No, no idea. Yeah. There's no question. Thank you. Yeah, for this. The wall outlet has power. <laughs> it's it's our connections. Oh, we we've switched them, and now Maybe we've I got power here. We've got power there. Oh no, no, not at all. It's that, your extension cord. Out. That brings it. Well, that well, well we have those. No, I mean his extension cord. I saw signatures. Well, yeah, it was. It I believe it was that connection right there. You don't have that any was a little I loose. wonder I bet they could find one around here though yeah. somewhere. Because there's okay. there's okay. Yeah, yeah, some around here somewhere. Okay. Yeah. I could just do this. What do you have do we have a book here that needs sewing? He's still doing any signatures? Well, no, you can go out front. I, I have to look. Okay. okay. I do have this one of my granddaughters. Ah darn it. Grand. Oh, oh, I can use that I what you have then. That might be better. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm missing the, the, the whole back thing. signature. 
So, I, but I can still, we can still what? see how the signature. I think I messed before. something up. Mm -hmm. What? I started pulling this back in. And it, I mean, it, it started falling back in. You're fine. Oh, can I just put it back yeah, in? Yeah, I'll accept I, 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 right I, I, along here. You want that loose enough? So, okay, you can so. Put this part in. So, I should just put it down. Mm -hmm. Here, just do it. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. I'm just going to do it. Oh, okay. Now. Brush. Now. And a little more glue. <laughs> Oops. Try not to be as sloppy as I am. Oh, that helps. Light! Yes. Okay. But okay, all now. Here, I guess. Hmm? It's all or nothing. The cover. It's down over it. Tuck it in as far as you can. What a challenge. <coughs> do this and lay it as flat as you can. What? And you may do need a little bit more glue. I, I guess I'll have to. Afterwards. Are you going to use the solid yeah. color? Black too. Yeah, solid color. I'll use the black. Do I need to put something in between there then? Mm -hmm. well, I'll just put that little box back where I store okay. something. Yeah. I just put it back if there's any left. Unless I guess we do it tonight, today. We still have. We have yeah. And, and this, that's the, you know, with these older books. Try to that's, get it straight anyway. that's the main yeah. thing. Cut it and everything. Use you know? fingernails. Looks great. There. Use your fingers, just push it back in, and then and and actually for that, this looks like when you have to glue the whole in cover in back, the inside cover, you want a piece of laminate that is big enough to cover the whole thing. Sometimes you need to kind of lift it up and then smooth it down again because it will get wrinkles. Which is oh, oh, you can, oh, look at that little brayer. Oh, it works great for smoothing it down, smoothing out bubbles. Okay, put that in there, right to the spine. Yeah. Is it up? Whoops. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> and push Don't it Don't wipe it on your jeans because it doesn't come out. It, no. I know because the last Never. workshop I had all over my pants. I kept wiping my hands and I thought okay, would wash out. You go just a little bit down there, down there, trying to get this all pushed back. And you're going to have to go under here and glue this whole glue thing. Glue all that. Yeah. Okay, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now would I do this in layers? We have some. Because you said like no, no don't glue. So okay, don't glue the cardboard down. Don't here. do that. Yeah. Just so the top. just this the part. material down. Uh -huh. You glue the material down, and you That's glue this material down. Yeah. And then when you're, do you all eventually done? put the cardboard no, down? When it's yeah. all done, after the material's oh, done, well, you'll bring it over like this, and then just glue down the just the edges so it'll stay, and then put oh, so the edges will stay. Yeah, but get yeah, all of these little pieces as much as you can unfolded and smoothed out, so you can try and cover it as much as you can with the so this this the material. You don't want to put the you just want to do the tips with glue eventually, except for in here. You don't you have to except for in there. Yeah, and then you just glue the edges. Have you ever sewn signatures on a book? It's good practice. Okay. Now on this one, <laughs> are they you own? Exacto knives work really great, or you can use any sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys are 
Mm. You really can't be a perfectionist even if you want to be. I just, I think, mm. I'm, I think I'm trying to be too much. <laughs> Okay, this is when you loose when you cut it just so you can get in through the spine. You just have to kind of you have to work at it slowly. Otherwise you can tear the uh, the lining cover. And this one is this one you're sewing? Yes, and this one oh bless their hearts. They glued it right down to the spine in the mystery. Yeah. Because then you can't get at it. You find the center of your signature. See how this is done? It's just a whole group of pages that are folded over. That is a signature. And I'm only putting that there so I can keep keep it open the way I want. Use a book binding needle or you could get some needles just so they have a larger eye, a little bit larger. This one has a sharp point. The book binding needles I used to get that I have someplace at home, tucked away somewhere, I couldn't find them, uh, have the blunt end. So when you get poked, it doesn't hurt. It hurts, it just doesn't go in as deep. It really doesn't, well it's rounded, so it doesn't really go in that yeah. as easily. These, you can jab yourself and draw blood many times. <laughs> Yeah, just like a blood test needle. Pretty much. Actually, the needle, when I have to have my shots, I get shots once a month for allergies. And you want to just hope like mad that these got a sharp needle. Dull ones just are painful. You have better eyesight than I have. You can thread a lot better. But you did it. You did good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a doc I ophthalmologist one time too. Well, we can improve your eyesight so that you can thread a needle. I was so mad. <laughs> he uh, gave me a prescription for my glasses, and I wouldn't even go get it filled. I get very stubborn. Okay, you don't tie any knots when you sew a book. No knots. No knots. And it's also a good idea to try and figure out where the stitches are. So you use the same hole? You try to. Oh, something came out. Is that yeah, another signature. So nobody brought any magazines today. But magazines basically are glue tipping, which I've shown you how I just glue along the edge, okay, and then just tuck them in there the best you can, and taping pages torn tears, because that's the main thing that's wrong. And then uh, the, for the spines, uh, you can use some the book tape to just to reinforce it so they don't tear and peel there. But the the covers on a on a magazine are thin, and so it's. Yeah. Do you guys save all the magazines? Yeah. Question: Would you just pull this little piece off? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think uh, so. If you can I smooth it out, I would glue it down because it's, it's just curled. Curiosity. 
collection, and it's on available online someplace. Exactly where the someplace is at. It's from the person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and I was trying to use that. I didn't find them all the way. I, I, I didn't find that, that easy to access. So oh, it's like <laughs> They even have sewing machines that will sew books like this. So you don't have to do this. Could you use a sewing machine with like a leather needle or something? So, so Only if you can get the stitches wide enough apart. Because otherwise a sewing machine will cut the paper. So Perforate how, far, how far apart does it have to be? Quarter inch? Well, probably like this. Oh, really? How? Yeah, if you have How it like inch? this, oh. you'll end up with just a cup page because it'll be so close together. Right. You know, the tension is... So you really need a special kind of... Are you doing a, like a uh, back stitch? Right now, I'm just poking holes. Oh. Okay. I love this all that Steve got. It's sharp. Pretty much, yeah. Working on books is is definitely like. Let's see. Two of them there. What I do is leave about an inch or so. This is really thin. And you know that clear, shiny tape? But you may not. So you don't pull your thread out. Thank you. It's just if you tape down the end of your tape, it helps because then you won't pull it out. But you go around the first two holes twice is what I do. It'll reinforce it. And keep your pages all together. Even there's so many different ways to do those. Yeah, some of them you have the two, you know, like this, or you'll just have one. So it just depends on how they've done it. Yeah. I'm using some of my sister-in-law's tape and it's good strong thread, I mean. Yeah. But it's really thin. Trying to get the hole into the center of your page sometimes is uh, try a linear it just depends until you get it yeah go oh, through it or trying to do that just threading you know try to get to the same spot and you're like i can't <laughs> after you get the first couple of them, then you're okay because your pages are held in place how many pages are you going through there about at one time uh, let's see does it matter how many you take just two, three. There's five pages here. Yeah. And cinch, try to cinch them up. Now, some of this thread, whatever, whatever it's really hard to cinch up because it doesn't want to cinch. So you just have to keep looking at it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
We're going to be hanging out with the tiny closets. Well, we're talking about if you're sewing books with a heavier thread, or do you guys have one here? Uh, sometimes it can get really difficult. It can get really difficult, if, especially if you're sewing like a thick book, a uh, textbook. Sometimes you had to sew through the back and uh, just straight through. Then you use your pair of pliers. This is archival quality, neutral pH. Then you get down to the end, you sew it around twice again to, it just reinforces it because those are your stress points. What is that? Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> what is it? I'll do that. Sometimes even these sewn books, they don't do that. And that's where it tears. It wasn't done like right the first time. It's been years since I saw it. Go watch that literally. Now it's my turn. And then you come all the way back down and go around twice at the bottom. And then cut it. You don't, absolutely no knots. Which is what I had a problem with my students. They'd always want to knot it so it wouldn't go through. Sewing books are a lot easier to sew than helmets football helmets or football pads. We had a lot of projects. Different projects. Oh, damn camera. Somehow I get things doing things I don't want it to do and I don't know how to keep it from doing it. Your phone? Your phone. Oh, it's in time-lapse now. I don't know how to get it out of time-lapse. You mean going to sleep? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You, you sometimes swipe this, and I'm like this, you push someplace, you turn and you scratch your head, you do something, or you get somebody to help you. Well, when you get through, you glue them. Oh, I didn't have never thought of that. I thought you were going to save three stitches in the end or something. Yeah. 